Hello and welcome back to another SSD test for the PS5. Today's video, much like a number of my SSD tests, was conducted in early to mid-September during the beta phase of the software update for PS5. Now, although everyone can take advantage of SSDs now for the PS5, it is worth remembering that this was recorded during that beta phase. The results are the same, the SSDs will work exactly the same, but during the course of the video, I will refer to the fact that beta, and when it was recorded, I didn't know when this feature was going to be enabled, so I thought it was important to slam this on intro at the beginning so you guys understand it, and it doesn't cause undue confusion. But for now, let's go ahead and see how the SSD test was conducted. Let's go. Hello and welcome back to this, the second stage of testing of the Corsair MP600 Pro. We've already looked at this drive with a bunch of games from our level 2 testing, Demon's Souls, Ratchet and Clank, Resident Evil, Doom and GTA, and this is our next barrage of testing. We'll be looking at Borderlands 3, Star Wars, Jedi Fallen Order, In Rays of the Light, Subnautica and Oddworld. Now, for those that haven't watched the previous segment, I do recommend you check out the previous video because we did look at the PlayStation's own internal benchmark and we did look at a lot of the transition of data to and from the SSD to the PlayStation 5 and vice versa. But in today's video, we are looking at this drive and we're going straight into the gameplay. We're using 250 gig of data. We've already transferred the games over. There are all of our games. We've even moved over the PS4 data from Borderlands 3 just in case anyone thought that would be a problem. It shouldn't be, um, but nonetheless, we've got all of those games there on the SSD installed inside this PS5. We're using the beta, beta 3.1. You can see at the bottom of the screen there, and hopefully this firmware will be out of beta and publicly available very, very soon as we go through all of the SSDs, 18 in total for this channel, where we are looking at how they perform, different load times comparing against the internal SSD and if there are any issues with some SSDs over others. And of course, every couple of weeks, we then compare all the SSDs together in a giant face-off as we go through each of them. So these videos can get repetitious, but if this is your first video, that's great for you, even if you have seen these loadings before. But let's crack on, shall we, with game number one, which is Borderlands 3. Now, this is a two-stage test. In this test, we are going to be looking at the full game load, comparing it against the internal SSD, and then we'll be loading a save game and seeing how it compares. So for now, let's load Borderlands 3. 3, 2, 1. Again, you should be seeing how this compares with loading on the internal SSD on the top left of the screen. I can only see the loading of the game uh, locally on the uh, Corsair that we're utilizing for today's video, the MP600 Pro. We will be looking at the specifications at the end of the video from the manufacturer's own website and going for some of the highs and the lows. And we have already reviewed this drive on the channel. Hopefully that video is already live there. But as we go through waiting for the game to load, it seems to be, yep, that seemed a pinch quicker than the most recent SSD that I have tested, the Crucial P5 Plus. Luckily, that's a, this is a game where you've got Claptrap running along the bottom showing, uh, which is, you know, you can see how far it's gone. But now we're at the title screen. It felt like it had to be pretty close indeed against the internal PS3 SSD. But for now, let's go ahead and move into the game. Again, we've got some online stuff here, so that's why we're not including this bit in the loading of the game. And again, this is the PS5 version, as you saw at the top of the video. But for now, let's load this save game and then see how, once again, the Corsair MP600 Pro compares against the internal PS5 SSD. 3, 2, 1. So we're loading into Pandora. It's one of the early stages of the game. And we're going to load into it there. We've already got the character nice and leveled up, uh, carried over from the uh, PS4 version. But here we are in the game. We're at another part here. Let's grab ourselves a vehicle just to, you know, get them all running together. We'll try and push graphically the game. I apologize in advance for some of the uh, pixelization that you're going to see. When we compress a lot of these videos in the corner, the result is that they can lead to pixel pixelation as things move around quite a lot on screen. But right now what I'm trying to do is move as quickly as I can through the game to try and force it into doing low texture polys or trying to get some pop there with stuff in the background. 
but for now it seems like it's running absolutely fine i'm seeing no drop in frame rate no unexpected textures there throughout i think for now we seem to be running quite well and i think from here we can start making our way into the next game which is star wars jedi fallen order so let's go into it there let's cancel out of that game i'm going to try and cut as little as possible in this video so you know that there's no um, kind of interruptions this isn't a game that we're going to be bench testing loading from the xmb the reason we're doing that is because this game as you're about to see has a horrendously large number of publisher logo delays there's also connections with the ea server something i saw while looking at the network on an earlier test so for now all we're going to do is let this run through to the title screen and then we're going to conduct one of two loading segments we're going to load the main saves that i've got on the game and then from there after we sort of run around the world a little bit to make sure there's no texture problems no issues we're then going to go into the meditation bit and load up one of the um kind of test areas one of the kind of challenges trials whatever you want to call them and from there we should be able to see if the game's got any delay against internal ps5 ssd versus the main um corsair ssd that we're utilizing today so we're on the title screen let's go ahead and compare them and count them in three two one go once again do bear in mind again i can only see the corsair loading of this you're the ones that can see it either side side by side um, so you're going to be able to tell before I do in fact or at least I'm going to see it in the post edit but for now we're making our way into an enemy area and here we are in the game so I'm going to go I know it's a little dark for you guys unfortunately the contrast of the PS5 versus what we're seeing is a little different but for now we're just letting the game load up into this next segment and from here we're then going to uh, just do a little bit of combat there while we go into it and let the game load up and yep seems to be fine i'm seeing no slowdown no texture problems there from what i can see i think for now it seems to be absolutely fine yep i think we can make our way back now and head back to the meditation area whereupon we will of course um, load up the little trial area there whereupon we can see how quickly it loads against the internal ps5 ssd words of which i've got to say are starting to lose all meaning because i've said them so many times at this point so let's make our way back again this game has quite a lot of loading when you're in the world there's precious little loading but between the segments it's quite fantastically slow uh, if we go into the meditation training bit there's going to be another load screen shortly and again we are comparing the load of the actual trial not just the kind of consequential and uh, collateral load that we've seen so far but we're going to load up Kashyyyk from here three two one a lot of loading a lot of loading and here we are in the game okay so we're in it let's go I think that's fine with everything we've seen so far yep i mean again you can hear the vibration there while i'm doing this no doubt uh, but no no texture problems at all no drop in frame rate while we're doing this it seems absolutely fine and i think for now this is kind of passing the test for me before we go into our next game but for now i think what we can do is start making our way into ray in rays of the light Let's go for that one there let's head in cancel this game out and from now make our way into rays of light again not a game that we're going to be bench testing loaded from the title screen it doesn't have any of the kind of network online play things to bear into consideration but as mentioned in previous videos this is a game that doesn't have the kind of fantastically efficient secret loading that a lot of other games will have and what i'm looking at here is loading into the main open area of the world and from there we're going to be running through a few segments as we go to make sure the game isn't going to have any difficulty loading those assets in or even the textures so we're going to go with three i'm uh, sorry two different load states so as we go through each one of them we are going to be looking for uh, textures and pop of graphics if there are any problems and of course the load time as well so let's go with the load we're going with load number three 
So let's go in with it. Three, two, one. We're making our way in, and that was a lovely quick load, exactly what we were expecting. You can probably hear my cat jingling there in the background. I'm recording this from home today. Um, but again, running through the graphics and textures are there. I know it's a little blurry for you guys in the capture there. But again, everything seems to have loaded in exactly how you would like it. Even when we go into something nice and close, it hasn't loaded in low textures. Um, I think that's fine for me there, making our way through it. Let's pass through into the world a little bit more. And just in the background, you can hear my cat absolutely effing up my rug. Um, so let's carry on here through the world. The shadows are fine. We've still got the ray tracing, the light effects there. Lovely stuff. And we'll carry on making our way through here into this back area. We're seeing no delays. All the textures are fine. Kills me that I'm holding the run button and this is actually the run speed. Maybe this is another one of those secret loading um, helping techniques there to stop you going too fast. But the world is all loaded in. I think that's absolutely fine. We can make our way into our next game, Subnautica. So Subnautica, again, this is a game that came out for PS4. It's a survivalist game, a kind of open world sandbox game. <coughs> and again... Lovely textures, been upscaled a number of ways, but one of the reasons I like bench testing this game is because it has a very granular loading screen. And we're going into creative mode, and in creative mode, it's gonna load up a lot of assets, but what's really important is we get to see how the game loads, and we see a lot more of those textures, because this game has a lot of up close and personal textures to utilize. But what's really important is when we go to the loading screen in three, two, one, you're gonna see there on the left-hand side of the screen, a lot of the assets being shown to be loaded in bit by bit, which is really cool, because this gives us a better understanding of how quickly things are loading side by side compared with the internal SSD versus that this Corsair MP600 Plus. And again, as I've mentioned in other videos, it harks back beautifully to the days of the 90s and 2000s of gaming. But for now, let's make our way into the water. From here, we can start making our way and exploring some of the undersea environment that this game so beautifully makes up. Um, again, as I've complained about in other videos, you guys haven't come to this to watch gameplay, I get that, or reviews, but I've got to say, God damn, I wish this game was multiplayer. It would be great as a, um, as a um, cooperative experience with you and maybe at least one friend, a bit No Man's Sky, something a bit like Forest and stuff like that. I think there's a lot that can be done. But again, the textures are there. We're going in nice and close. I'm not seeing any problems. I know you guys are seeing things a tad more pixely than I, but for me, this does still seem to be running pretty darn well, and there's no slowdown at all. And if we make our way above water, just to double check that we've got all of that in place. Again, I apologize for the large white blob there on the recording. May have gone down a little bit too dark in deep areas there for the recordings, but as we make our way in the above water there and the effects of the water still absolutely great there we've got the game we've still got all the lighting effects running beautifully i think yeah that's a good enough test for me i think this game's running well for me and we can make our way into our final test which is odd world soul storm now again this is a ps5 exclusive title we're not going to be testing it from the load game we're just going to be going into the save load so we can talk over it a little bit Sorry, clearing my throat there just a tiny bit. Make our way into the game. And from here, it's a simple load procedure. We're gonna be loading into an early stage of the game that's got lots of um, activities and assets all running at once. Abe's eyes there. But let's go in at three, two, one. It's a lovely quick load and we are in. So again, absolutely fine. I know it's a bit pixely for you guys, but again, we're just looking at how quickly the game runs, making sure that there's no delays, any secret load, any texture drops, anything like that. So it seems to be running absolutely fine there. No problems whatsoever, apart from my ability or inability sometimes to play games. Again, as mentioned in other videos, this is something I'm conducting with a slight delay because of the capture. So the consequence is sometimes games that have difficult jumps 
I will end up absolutely fluffing it. But for me, all of the effects, everything I expect to see here is happening. Things are exactly where I expect them to be. And I think for now, we can call it and make our way back into the XMB to summarize everything we've seen today. I'm gonna to move these games back onto the internal console storage. And while we do that, we'll talk a little bit about this SSD and any positives and minuses that we can take from today's video. So, if we head back to the manufacturer's page, right here on screen, we're able to see, bringing that down, that the SSD from Corsair there, it's not the cheapest. As to be said, it does arrive with that heatsink already on board, which is always a good thing. But nonetheless, this MP600 isn't the cheapest SSD. £184 for 1TB It's by no means the most expensive. But again, I think a lot of people are wondering what you get for your money. And it is a 7,000 megabytes per second SSD, which again is exactly what you want to see given that the recommended minimum is 5,500 for PS5. And even the sequential write, which a lot of people are largely overlooking for PS5, which I do think later in the console's life will be a factor, is still fantastically high. I opt a little low, but given that you are going to be dealing with more sequential data than you will kind of 4K, kind of light stuff, I think this is absolutely fine. And the SSD, although it, the reason it stands out, I think, amongst a, a lot of other vendors right now, even though the Samsung 980 Pro, uh, the WD Black SN850, and the Fire Cuda 530 are very much leading the charge for recommended SSDs for most people on the PS5 expansion slot, at least when it's out of beta and full release. Because of availability and these drives suddenly going up in price because they're being scalped like most of the, let's be honest, scumbags that are scalping stuff on PS5, um, a lot of these other SSDs, a lot of people may, who they might not have purchased originally are suddenly falling into the fold. It's not like the previous generation using SATA hard drives and SSD. The range is a lot more peculiar this time around and the technology is a lot newer than when we were, uh, the previous generation consoles were using SATA media. And of all of what I would consider the second tier of SSDs, SSDs like the Gigabyte Aurorus, uh, the MP600 Pro, like this one, and other SSDs that we talked about before, like the MSI um, Spatium M480, these are what I consider the second tier SSDs, that because of availability problems at the top tier, these, with a more affordable price point, and indeed better availability, particularly in the US, have suddenly fallen into the fold, and I've got no hesitation in recommending this drive, because I think, although it lacks some of the endurance and the IOPS of those other three top-tier drives I've talked about, this is very much a front-runner in that second-tier level of storage there. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let's flick back to the PS5, shall we? Well, it transfers that data. Of course, if you do want to learn more, I recommend you subscribe. We still haven't made our way through all of the SSDs with multiple tests. And we will, of course, every couple of weeks, revisit these SSDs for a final face-off with all of the SSDs to see which is the best of the best each time. And hopefully we'll get all of this done before the software is fully released out of beta so everyone knows the best SSDs they can go for. If you've enjoyed the video, click like. It helps me know what you guys want in these videos and how to make them the best they possibly can be for you guys. I am learning from the comments and I am taking it all on board. Thank you so much for watching. Use the links in the description to all of the products, all of the heat sinks and all of the guides that I've made recently and I've directed to. And otherwise, I will see you next time.